Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. Welcome to Breeders' Cup Focus. In this edition, we're going to take a look at the top contenders for the Breeders' Cup turf. We'll take a look at the list. They are ranked in order of morning line preference. The morning line set by Daily Racing Forms, ace handicapper Brad Free. Will she or won't she? Will the great enable return to North America for yet another crack in the Breeders' Cup turf? The fact that she is 8-5 to five and Bricks and Mortar is 4-1, to one, and Bricks and Mortar has been the dominant turf force in North America all year long, that says something about how great Enable has been throughout her career. Yeah, it really does. It says it all. She's just been a terrific, terrific horse, and you know it was unfortunate that she couldn't pick up her third arc last weekend, but she gave it her all. She ran a terrific race. She just couldn't do it. Otherwise, I mean, there are just no mistakes on her card yet. Well, let's watch the arc. Enable ran great in defeat. A couple of horses on this list, including the one that defeated Enable, Waltgeist. He's in this field. Let's take him through the last quarter of a mile. Waltgeist is here, Japan, Magical, and of course, the Super Mare. Yeah, that's a, Enable making the front right here. Um, you know, maybe she went a little early in this race. I don't know about that. It seemed more, as far as her trainer's concerned, that the soft ground, you know, was really going to make it hard on her, and it did. But Take nothing away from her, take nothing away from Vault Geist. He ran a huge race here. He's a much improved horse this year, and he just came with a big run at the end, and he goes right by her. Those are two very, very classy horses and very dangerous contenders, obviously, if they come for the turf. Yeah. If not enable, certainly Vault Geist. Now, Bricks and Mortar is 50-50 to run in the turf. He'll probably be pre-entered here. Chad Brown right now is kind of leaning towards the mile. He's not sure whether Bricks and Mortar wants the mile and a half. I think he's not sure if he really wants the mile. He's probably more of a mile and a quarter horse, as we see in the Manhattan. But it really doesn't matter what distance it's been this year. He has just dominated throughout. He came out of this win to take the Arlington Million, and he's tactical. He finishes off all of his races. You can't knock this horse. No, you can't. I, you know, I don't. I don't know what his best distance is, Dan. But I wouldn't put anything past him. A mile, a mile and a half, um, wherever they decide to run him, um, I would not take his chances lightly. He's just been, you know, he's been a good horse from day one. He has been super since he's come back from the long layoff. Let's talk a bit about the Arc 4th, Japan. And if you believe that the soft ground worked against Enable, it might have worked against Japan as well, the son of the super stallion Galileo. He was coming into the Arc off four consecutive wins. Of course, he won the Epsom Derby, Grand Prix de Paris, Judmont International. This is a very good horse, and maybe the ground was the excuse for him in the Arc. He still might have a little upside. Yeah, I think he probably does. He's only a three-year-old, um, but he just keeps getting better with every race. His arc, you know, listen, he couldn't get it done in there. He didn't want a poor race at all. Um, if he comes, he's a major player in this race. Old Persian probably has a little bit to find. I always thought he was more of a second-tier European horse. Found a great field in the Northern Dancer at Woodbine. We'll watch this race right now, and I mean, he's odds-on for a reason. He's supposed to beat the focus groups, Tizza Slams and Nessies of the world. He goes right by, and he's on his way home. Yeah, we'll see what happens um, if he comes, if he stays for the Breeders' Cup, that is. Um, I suspect that if he does, um, compared to the field that he's beating right here that we're watching, if, you know, Enable and Vault Guys in Japan show up, this horse might go into shock in the paddock. Magical was second in the Breeders' Cup turf last year behind Enable. Coming into the race in arguably a bit better form last year than she is this year. She won the British Champions Philly and Mare. She's run really, really well this year, though, as well. She took the Irish Champion two starts back over Magic Wand and Anthony Van Dyke, who's on this list. And again, maybe she didn't care for the ground in the arc. She was a 20 to 1 chance that day. I just have a feeling Enable's a little better than she is. Yeah, I think that's probably true. Um, but, you know, let's not forget that she faced Enable a couple of times earlier this year, and she ran big races both times. She's not up to Enable, or at least not quite up to her. But, boy, she's run good races against that mare a bunch of times. Um, this is a really good field. We've got the Epsom Derby winner, Anthony Van Dyke, running third in that race. I said Japan won that race. Epsom Derby. Japan ran third, beating a half length. My eyesight is going. But Anthony Van Dyke... This is a horse who came in for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf last year at a terrible post position, yielding turf course that I really don't think he liked, and he just didn't fire. His uh, Epsom Derby winner notwithstanding, I still think he needs to prove himself at this Group 1 level against older horses. I agree, I agree with that. I think he, he has a lot to find. If, if this, you know, everybody on this list shows up, um, he's got a lot to find. We'll see how the field shakes out. 
Channel Maker 20 to 1, Arclo 20 to 1. These are some nice sources coming out of the Joe Hirsch. I just am not sure they're international top class. Yeah, I agree with that. They're both really nice sources. But again, if, if a lot of these Europeans show up, these two horses are in pretty deep. And if Acclimate runs, he's probably going to be the pace setter in here. And at Southern California, you know, those turf horses can get rock hard. He might at least be able to take them a long way. I love the home court advantage. He'll need a career best. Enable. Let's hope she comes for the Breeders' Cup. She is a true superstar internationally. Bricks and mortar might end up in the mile. Japan's got upside. It would be a great rematch if Enable and Voltgeist match up in the Breeders' Cup. Magical's been chasing Enable all year long. Really strong European contingent, as always, for the Breeders' Cup turf.